Okay, so I welcome all of you in this uh, unit four class. Uh, in this class, uh, we will cover. Uh, I think I will be able to cover this in two and three classes. So this is the first one regarding the parasitic diseases of the zoo and wild animals. And uh, before coming to the main topic, I just want to know uh, the different types of parasitic diseases. Uh, just enumerate, uh, you people enumerate the uh, name of the parasitic that may be occurring in the wild animals. Just enumerate one, two, three, four, five names. In names, most of you are knowing from the parasitology. Just you tell me the name, then I will discuss. Rana Pratap. Wild animals, wild animals, whether it is types of ruminants, herbivores, carnivores, canides, phyllides, equide, camelid, anyone. Ajit? Ajit? Koi naam boli na, and that's the boli. Babesiosis, very good. It's not both famous. Fasciola hepatica. Trypanosomiasis. Fasciola hepatica. Trypanosomiasis. Kis se awajai? Or bhoot saare news bante hai. Times of India cover karta hai. Cystosomiasis. Yes, it is in my slide. Just I want to know whether I am debating from or I am on the right path. So, apne jitna bhi naam bola hai, sab apke slide mein abhi enumerated hone ja rahe hai. Apne slide dekha nahi hoga most probably. Uh, so any other name, very, very important parasitic diseases. Toxoplasmosis. Very good. Toxoplasma. Toxoplasma. These are the emerging new disease. Toxoplasma is one of them. This is also in my slide. Okay. Any other name? Sir, GRDI. You can tell GRDI is also there. I think it is not in my slide, I just I remember, but GRDI certainly is there, uh, where the animals are uh, in is contact with the water. Uh, it, is more, it will be more in captivity, I think so. Uh, GRDI is certainly there, I have, I have gone through, I have read this, GRDI. Next. Anaplasmosis. Yeah, it might be any anaplasmosis, but I'm talking about the parasitic disease. Anaplasma is a bacterial disease. Sir, Thelesia, thel, Thelesia, Thelesia, yes. Thelesia or Thelaria? Thelesia, sir. Eye bomb. Thelesia, eye bomb. It's yes, sir. All, all thelarial bombs are occurring, okay? So most of the nematodal bombs, what we have, I, I'm, I, actually, I have not taught to you. So it will be daily in uh, unit six. So nematodal bombs are there in which the strong ile is very, very important. And uh, your heart bomb is very so. Uh, just I'm coming to the class. So the parasitic and the uh, wildlife diseases. Um, just I have uh, uh, given a here just a look. It may be nematodal as the wild and domestic and the companion animals. We will discuss one by one. Trematodal disease as we have discussed in companion and wild animals. And cystodal diseases, although trematodal disease is very very rare in companion animals. And the most, most important one is the protozoa. Means what we have talked. And just I have left the ectoparasites. Uh, it, but there are ticks. Because without ticks, uh, the, there is no uh, use of talking this protozoan diseases. And also the fly, the different fly, stomoxis fly and uh, tabernus fly. So uh, vectors are also included. But uh, it will be beyond the scope uh, to cover all the vectors because uh, I will deal all the vectors uh, during the class if it is a vector bond disease. So vector bond diseases are really, and as I have told in the introductory class, that most of the diseases that are emerging nowadays are from the wildlife origin and most of them, and, and in that also, some of them are, have a genotic importance. So this is, I'm starting from the uh, protozoan disease because this is, uh, uh, this is most widely talked uh, whatever the mortality, I have a list of uh, mortality uh, in the different Jews where there is a mortality of uh, either leopard or the tiger or the lion and most of them are from the hemoprotozoal disease. There are long list if you can search the Jews uh, mortality of the uh, phyllites in different Jews of India, 
you will find the list that most of them are caused by the protozoan so in which the, some of the protozoan as you have already told uh, these protozoans are very very important and in which the first one that i am today i am going to talk is the trypnosomosis and we may call it a trypnosomiasis now the terminology has changed we call it osis not asis and then we will talk about the babesiosis coccidiosis calidosis certainly there but uh, but in a limited number of animals but this trypnosoma and babesiosis have a wide host range and then as you have told the toxoplasma gondii amebiasis and uh, actually uh, actually i want to write the giardia and, and uh, two times i have the toxoplasmosis so just uh, uh, i will make a correction of that so these are some of the protozoan diseases we are going to discuss now the nematodal diseases there are numerous nematodal diseases i am going to talk in the nematodes uh, when i will teach the your uh, six unit i will broadly deal with each and, and all the ppt are loaded you can refer them all the ppt are already loaded uh, because i have taught the your um, previous batch so there is no need of uh, loading this um, uh, parasitic diseases uh, you can refer them whatever the disease i am because heart worm i have already taught so you can refer the heart worm of canine and on almost similarly like that canine the heart worm is the rampant in the wildlife filariasis as you told even the eye worms so most of the filarial worms are creating a problem as a nematodal worms in the wildlife then escherichia is the one of the greatest problem as we know both in a small animals either in canine or in feline even in wild animals even in our domestic animals escheriasis is one of the problem and i have seen a case of escheriasis in snake i will share the photographs what i have seen uh, was the case was brought to me uh, from the nearby zoo patna and uh, that uh, escheriasis uh, it was just like a uh, uh, symptom was uh, just there was a big swelling in the python there was a big swelling in the in the mid region there was a big swelling in the mid region and uh, it was diagnosed later on by the post mortem examination it was looking like something the python has ingested like a ball like a big football like a lesion was there so it was a case of escheriasis the whole escheriasis were making a round a round covering making a big ball like a strong um, covering and then a strong guide is there so parasitic gastroenteritis i will deal in which there are um, so many parasites are there nematodal worms and these are there then in calostroma hook worms we will deal and the two important other diseases that are not very much frequent in the domestic animal is streptococcus and dracunolysis so these are some of the important nematodal worm we are going to discuss uh, in the coming classes so starting uh, okay uh, the trematodal worms the trematodal diseases the two very important is you you, are, you only told me that that cystosomosis and fasciolosis are two very very important diseases especially uh, actually they will be more in 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 open area when there when there will be lodgement when there will be accumulation of water in the forest area and when there will be slain population so these are not very much in captivity so in captivity there are certain other problem like escheriasis but in wild condition in open condition the other parasitic worms are important that is cystosomiasis and fasciolosis and especially we will give a stress on some specific animals in which animal which disease is more more important for example we have to give some stress on on a, a elephant and i am trying to bring a, a man uh, who is just got award he is one of the biggest man in india dr uh, Uh, Sarma from uh, Northeast, and he was just awarded uh, a, a President Award, and so I'm trying to bring him as a on webinar so that you people will will be benefited for the knowledge regarding the elephant. As we have talked about the um, wild uh, words uh, and fancy words, we have a webinar. So I'm trying to contact Dr. Sarma so that he can have a um, um, class and webinar on the, this wild animals. now in cystodal ward diseases also the tenesis and echinococcosis are the two very very important diseases that will be dealt in uh, in a broader way now coming basically the most important disease that is rampant in both in captivity as well as in in uh, open that is in zoo as well as in forest 
and this is trypanosomiasis and this is the most widely talked disease uh, not only in wild condition but in, but in our domestic uh, condition also kuch bhi hota hai to log bolte hain isko sarda bimari ho gaya hai aur uh, arjun phone humko karta hai kahin se sir iski iska bukhar nahi toot raha hai uh, whenever there is this type of call the quicks and the, and the field practitioners they always say uh, because they don't have any facility to go for the uh, blood smear examination but still we can go if we make a slide immediately from the ear vein and we, if we can have a cover slip only and there is no need of going for a bigger bigger test uh, if you can go for um, um, bed film examination it is very easy to diagnose the case of trypanosomiasis or trypanosomiasis and this can be done by your your side also by the simple microscope only we have to depend otherwise we blindly say any any um, uh, disease that is showing a very wide range of clinical sign right from anorexia to depression to hypothermia to hyperthermia if the people are not able to diagnose we call in a field condition the animal is suffering from sarra so this may be because it has a very wide range of um, clinical sign ranging from a high rise of body temperature to a lower body temperature to a moderate normal body temperature and sweating and all the condition peripheral edema and therefore uh, people used to say uh, sarra sarra means rottening condition so sarra is one of the important disease of domestic as well as wild animals caused by trypanosoma evensi and it is the disease of our region tropical and subtropical yes pardon किन्हों कुछ बोलना है। This is just a case of unique case I am going to discuss today, and uh, you will feel thrilled, and I was thrilled. I uh, just no. a day before. Please mute Priyanka. But उनकी आवाज आ रही है। Okay, just uh, one on today is uh, uh, on twenty one of this day. A case was brought to you in the clinical complex. Doctor B K Singh, the Vivek was there, me uh, was there, and in the medicine OPD, and we have seen a case. Please mute. Anand. Yes, sir. देखो सर म्यूट हो गया सर ओके ओके सो जस्ट आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस द डिफरेंट केसेस व्हाट वी हैव सीन इन ट्रिप्टोसोमियासिस एंड टू स्टोरी आई विल टेल वन द केस जस्ट वी हैव सीन अ डे बिफोर व्हेन अ केस ऑफ डॉग and this was although we know that trypanosomiasis is uh, um, is reported in canine but i have never seen a slide positive you see how many trypanosoma was in this slide a single uh, small view and this was the case brought in the clinical complex with high rise of body temperature there was panting there was panting like a respiratory distress or like the dog is suffering from some respiratory problem or a cardiac problem this was the symptom and there was sinusitis of tongue but uh, fortunately we have taken a blood slide and till 3 pm we were able to appreciate that this was due to trypanosoma and this was i think the first case i have seen in canine it was reported but therefore i have brought and similarly it may be found in the wild animals also it is very very common in domestic animals especially in equines as well as in buffaloes and cattle in the field condition but in canines and felites this is really in one of the test book i have seen that uh, they have uh, one of the uh, author of a test book has written that uh, trypanosoma evensi in canine it can be produced experimentally just you can also read that book i will not name that book but i have found a clinical case we have peer found not we have a team of our uh, clinician as well as the diagnostic person have found this and this we are going to report publish a paper uh, the, regarding this unique thing because we have a uh, so much things re, uh, regarding this dog we have done ecg the ecg was normal we have gone for uh, um, x ray of lateral view and vd view it was normal and then surprisingly uh, this 
uh, dog was highly, highly positive for the crossover event side. So, so just keep in mind this. And um, just, uh, I don't have time now. I will show the video. Uh, I think uh, eight, eight to 10 years back, when a white tiger was ill in our zoo, a team was created by your honorable uh, uh, ex-dean, Dr. S. Samantwe. He was leading the team and me and Dr. Ajit again and Dr. Samantre went there and just take a wet film of uh, uh, that tiger. And fortunately, all the tips were moving. And we, we have a very good video of that. And how I, we made that video, at that time, our mobile was no so not so high. That, so we have br brought the person who is doing, uh, uh, camera person who is doing recording on, in, in the marriage. So we have done recording from that uh, on the spot. So we have that video. We will show you the white tiger was saved. Uh, by fluid therapy, by glucose therapy, and by giving the anti uh, anti trypanosomal drugs. Anti. So this was the slide, and you see Kamlesi. Either I. He is Kamlesi, and you might be knowing uh, his role is also there, and he is happy that uh, you are seeing this slide because he has stained this slide. Jai, bache log aapko dekh rahe hain because so. Uh, coming back uh, again, so always keep in mind that any type of disease can be diagnosed for that. And I'm looking for the Lismania donovania in canine because it is there. Lismania donovania is there. I have not found this line positive for Kalajar in dog. It is reported and, and even in wild animals, this uh, uh, disease is there. So coming back to the main, the clini uh, clinical cases have been reported in most of the wild species, including the deer, the elephant, the cabra, the jaguars. Uh, I have written references because uh, without references cannot tell, uh, you cannot tell because uh, with reference I am talking and this is the method when you will be entered into post-graduation, you have to tell anything with the reference. So these are the scientists who have seen the uh, tryptosoma in different species and among wild animals, the sarai is often fatal in captivity. So in captivity in wild, it's very, very difficult to diagnose the case, but in captivity, sarai is really become a fatal disease and you see the host range, equid, and really this is a disease of equines and camels. Equidae and camelite, this is one of the uh, disease actually means by equid and camelite only, but it is reported in more than 13 wild animals, including the pigs, the mithun, the tiger, the foxes, the jungle cat, the elephant, the deer, and the cheetah. So these are some of the reported data I have just brought here because there is, uh, it's very, very difficult to get all this data in a single book and we have to talk with the reference with the paper. So these are some of the paper, um, some of the collection uh, we have done. Uh, these are the uh, first bite of the sucking, how the transmission. Now, as we know that uh, in domestic animal, this tryptosoma is transmitted by the fly. But in case of wild condition, uh, there are four methods uh, through which we can, one animal can be infected from animal. The first, the same process, first by the bite of a sucking insect from a long reservoir, like the pig, the cattle, and the sheep, and the goat. And therefore, in the first introductory class, uh, I talked about the interactions of the human being, the wild animals, and the domestic animal that is at the vicinity or the at the extremity of the forest, where the villagers come in contact with the, uh, with the forest area, and their animals come in contact with the forest area. So these are the zone from where there is a spilling of the uh, animals from uh, spilling of the parasitic or the viral or the bacterial gen from the domestic animal because uh, from uh, domestic animal to wild animals and from wild animals to domestic and uh, domestic animal that is the vice versa condition. So these are the zone uh, where the, where the uh, animals of the uh, villagers enters into the forest. And when they share the common resource of fooding and watering, there is always a chance of a spilling of the uh, viruses from normal host to the abnormal host also. So second is the bite of the blood sucking insect from exotic animal species in the zoo. And third is intro heterogenic transmission as reported by Bhattacharya et al. Uh, by, by any infected blood contaminators and syringe, but we, but we uh, throw uh, here and there. So as in other animals, this may be in case of a wild animal also. But the fourth is the very, very important. You know the carnivores, they might have infected by initial of freshly cut meat. You know how the carnivores, when we talked uh, in the first class, 
how they go for the trapping of the animals how they go for the trapping the tiger go for the trapping of the antelope or the deer uh, if they are suffering from this disease the tiger will be infected so this way by the ingestion of the meat infected meat this uh, disease can be transmitted to the felites or the canides foxes uh, and other uh, felides so as the pathogenesis is well explained uh, in different patho uh, and even in medicine class you might have gone through the pathogenesis just i have enumerated a few things like the de decrease in the blood glucose level as in other domestic animal and due to the lysis of the parasite there is induction of toxemia so toxemic condition is there hepatopathy is there hepatomegaly is there and respiratory distress due to elevated lactate level get elevated and due to that the animal and that i have seen in the dog because dogs are very very close uh, to the foxes and other and other wild animals so i have seen that, that case the animal was brought only we have nebulized that animal dog as uh, so seeing that it was showing expiratory dyspnea and so respiratory distress i just i have seen and certainly uh, anemia is very very important there will be anemia although this is not present in the rbc but it get lysis of the rbc by present in the cytoplasm so anemia is well defined in case of trypanosoma uh, uh, in case of wild animals so other clinical signs that, that is also present in domestic animal is the edema in the dependent part of the or due to oozing of the uh, fluids especially in the dependent part like the limbs this is very important and then anemia and you always know the trypanosomiasis shows a neurological sign and most of the time you confuse with so many diseases especially the rabies the last year i was in the class when i talked about the elephant case uh, that died uh, previous year uh, in a samastipur area and we were initially thinking of that it is a case of uh, uh, trypanosomiasis but trypanosoma and rabies always give a confusing sign in both the signs there will be head pressing there will be a uh, frenzy and maniacal condition there will be attacking on the animal so without uh, without examination you cannot confirm it that this is one, maybe a case of rabies or this might not be a case of uh, uh, trypanosoma especially in case of white animal but certainly there will be sudden death if it is in for acute condition but generally because this shows a wide range of condition rising from a chronic sarra chronic uh, trypanosoma to um, a clinical uh, sarra in which um, acute condition and then the per acute condition so in case of forest if the animal if the especially the tigers the felidae or the canidae is dying uh, people sus first suspect it to be a, a case of uh, uh, trypanosoma or it might be a case of babesiosis so these are the two very important diseases reported in our forest reported in our zoos and then as other diseases the corneal opacity but it's very very difficult to appreciate all these in the wild condition but you can appreciate this lesion especially in the captivity so diagnosis i you know as we have talked the diagnosis is through blood smear examination but there is difficulty in trypanosoma diagnosis because once you bring a uh, blood smear uh, blood collect uh, blood in edity a vial and bring it to 400 from a 400 km jungle to your lab at that time when you see the blood smear examination uh, that um, that uh, pro uh, protozoa get hemolyzed uh, that lies so you are not able to see in most of the cases therefore here also when you when you uh, uh, see the uh, number of cases of trypanosoma positive written here is very 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 low negligible because most of the people bring that blood for blood smear examination and we used to appreciate celeriosis vesiosis and anaplasmosis because they are lying in the cells and therefore they they are able we are able to see it in the cells rbc but because this is present outside the cell and by bringing the um, this the parasite uh, in a in a edta while uh, there is a delay if you see immediately then you can able to appreciate but uh, and therefore we we are able to appreciate the dog case yesterday because it was done immediately just we have collected and just we have fixed and just we have made a slide and therefore we are able because it was a fresh blood so for that you have to keep in mind that always be ready with a bed film examination so you will be able to appreciate even in zoo uh, 10 year back when we have diagnosed a case of trypanosomiasis uh, it was it was done through a bed film examination not through blood smear examination and staining and fixing so 
other is uh, this is spelling mistake hypoglycemia is there uh, other tests that we can do in the equid and the camel id are the mercury chloride test uh, formal gel test just you keep in mind the name of this test uh, because uh, this is beyond the scope uh, you have to go for the refer to parasitology class uh, for just you just for examination point of view uh, you have to remember the test name of the test the silver my test the formal gel test the mercury chloride test all uh, might have been dealt in um, or will be dealt in the unit 6 in broader bay and then uh, the recent technique the uh, polymerase chain reaction pcr test for final diagnosis we have uh, so oh, coming back to the treatment the treatment as we have seen of wild animals is not a practical approach how you will treat uh, when you diagnose a case of trip in one animals how you will go for treatment to all the animals this is almost impossible case so one should only discuss about it its control treatment in captivity can be done because one animal one cage system is there so once you diagnose the case you have seen a case in the pet well you can go for the treatment but when we are talking in the wild condition it is almost a uh, impractical approach so how a treatment of wild animals in captivity can be discussed we are, so we, what the uh, treatment we are discussing here is in the captivity so uh, there are so many treatment references again i have brought a reference references we are have to talk in the wild condition with the reference so most widely used trypanoside compound in the infected tigers are successful treated with diminagine acetate now you know berenil you know one of the very very important diminagine acetate so it is effective in treatment for trypanosomiasis also although the drug of choice when we ask for trypanosoma is drug of choice paramin sulfina paramin but in case of wild condition and there so much mortality has occurred without diagnosis and then they use this medicine also by the use of this medicine some of the zoos animal start dying so this is a very very critical situation when you will be posted as a wildlife or, or when you have to decide to use a, uh, this trypanosome uh, drug or babesial uh, babesidal drug in case of wild animals always there is a great great risk and you have to have a courage to start the medications because you know hypoglycemia is a very very important uh, pathogenesis of uh, this uh, disease other medicine uh, besides the diminagine acetate is melarsamine hydrochloride okay uh, um actually no i have not uh, you will come across this uh, melarsamine hydrochloride when i will deal with a very important disease uh, called heart worm disease in canine and this is also a very important disease in case of wild animals and then uh, what anand has just told me is a quinapara quinaparamin salt actually the two salts are available for the quinaparamin chloride and quinaparamin sulfate so this salt is reported people have used successfully uh, for the treatment of trypanosoma especially in tigers the triquin name is there then in wolves also in black buck also and in jungle cats these are some of the a reported use of this quinaparamin salt in these animals have been successfully used for the treatment of trypanosomiasis now recently isometamidium hydrochloride also used for the treatment of trypanosomiasis in india but and the choice of drug for treatment depends but the choice of drug for the treatment whether you are uh, doing the treatment in elephant whether you are doing in deer whether you are doing in antelope whether you are using chitral whether you are using in felites but whenever the case of felites felidae means the cat family come you have to be careful because some you know, up, you know, reaction is maximum in this uh, felidae family so coming to the um, our last approach is the prevention and control and as you know once the disease the disease that is uh, transmitted from uh, by a bacter it is very very difficult to control how you will control a fly how you will control a cavernous nestomasis fly that is the that is a national issue that may be a policy issue that may not be a doctor one doctor can control a vector population he can only advocate that you just spray insecticide is spread pesticides but that is beyond in a when a bigger bigger area is there this can be done in captivity but again it is done, it's almost impossible 
in case of a wild forest in a big forest area but still the governments are doing their best in by integrated pest management ipm method for vector control are now being practiced in many zoos in india we are practicing this integrated pest management system in the in the especially in the zoos of india and but uh, uh, when you will come here and i will bring all of you to the zoo and uh, the and like a vaccination because the vaccine for this is not available so in absence of vaccine as you have read in domestic animal and uh, we can go for chemo prophylactic procedure we used to give a dose of tuna uh, paramein to the susceptible animal the animal that are highly susceptible to trypanosoma um, um, i think uh, recently one one month back uh, our zoo has gone for this uh, chemo prophylactic treatment so although this is a treatment as you might be knowing that that this uh, this uh, drug can be used in a clinical way as well as for a preventive measures so alternative measures should be designed to cope up the trypanosomiasis in big cats so again thank you again the same picture what i have shown and again the paw this is called a paw paw therapy is there so just